Hey guys, it's Boki here from Gigi's Fabric Shop, home to Juki Junkies, and we are in for a really great video today. We're going to be doing a how to clean your Juki computerized machine. But before we hop into that, let me just tell you a little bit about who we are. We are Gigi's Fabric Shop. We are a Juki and Janome dealer here. And if you are ever in the market for a brand new machine, you definitely know who to call. If you ever want to experience some fabulous customer service, you can always give us a call. We always try to make sure we put you on the right machine. That's really what we're known for here. If you ever want to visit our our website it's jukijunkies.com you can see that down there below or you can download our Gigi's Fabric Shop app for lots of kits fabric inspirations and all that good stuff but let's hop in today on what we're doing and how to clean your Juki computerized machine oh that was pathetic action <laughs> so today we're going to be diving into cleaning our computerized machine so let's talk about what we're going to need in order to do that so here I have my beautiful HZL F600. So if you have the F600 or you have like a uh, DX7, DX5, DX2000, any really computerized machine in the Juki world, that's all really going to apply to you, okay? So some tools that I have here are gonna be these fabulous cleaning swabs. I mean, these are like the best of the best. I rave about these. We all rave about them because they're truly the best bang for your buck. Our oiling pen, this is the Tri-Flow pen. It has a really nice skinny tip that's gonna help you get into those hard to reach places here. All right, I know you're like, uh, I didn't know I need to oil this machine. We'll get to that, so do not worry. We got the refill um, bottles here. There's also a six ounce option on the website too, especially if you have a TL machine. Um, we are gonna link the description, um, the video to how to clean your TL machine if you have a Juki TL, so don't worry. I have a little T-screw here to take off my plate. I also have a bigger screw here, a Phillips head, so I can open this little side cover. And my favorite part of the cleaning process is a vacuum. So we kind of uh, jerry-rigged this one, so to speak. It's just a nice skinny tip that's gonna allow you to suck up all the fabric because you wanna be able to suck up all the dust and the lint in there, not blow it into other places. So no canned air, no blowing at it. The point is to grab it and take it out so it's not in the machine anymore. All right, so let's talk about how to get into this little cover here and what we need to look for, let's all right? Let's get underneath that plate. To do that, we're gonna make sure we lift up our presser foot. I like to snap off the feet just so nothing's in the way. All right, make sure that needle is up so obviously you can take everything um, off. You're gonna go in with your T-screw here and you're just gonna loosen these screws. There should be two, okay? And then I just like to use my finger to like unscrew them that's just really the easiest thing for me because they're kind of short little stubby screws and then protect these with your life you guys keep them on the side keep them in the, like a little magnetic tray so you can hold them onto the side what helps me take this plate off the easiest is by taking off this little cover and then just using my t-screw to kind of lift it a little bit right here so then I can grab it and easily take it off okay so voila we are in here we are underneath the needle plate so go ahead and remove your bobbin and go ahead and remove your bobbin case. We're gonna start off by cleaning the bobbin case first, all right? So go ahead and take one of your little brushes and sweep through that, kind of pick up any of those debris in there, all right? Turn it on on the back side, get into those little nooks and crannies and just pick up any dust that you can. And you'll see that that brush starts picking up things that you didn't even know were there. So this is a great moment for you to go ahead and examine your bobbin case. Bobbin cases are unfortunately one of the first things that get damaged. One of the most frequently replaced things on any machine is it all comes from putting them in improperly and then unfortunately the needle hits it, a needle breaks and we didn't find all the fragments. So it starts scratching around, creating all these little bumps and scratches and we can't have that on these bobbin cases they have to be nice and smooth there can't be any puncture lines especially up on this top region right here because what's working and what's happening is that the thread is going to wrap around this so if there's any burrs or scratches that's how you get issues with tension and things like that so go ahead and examine this while we're cleaning i'm going to show you an example of a bad one so here's one with a fr fracture or a, a little puncture from like a needle all right, and then there's some, you always examine it like on the sides here. There's gonna be um, other examples. This one you can see definitely got a really bad hit. The whole top portion is missing. That's gonna affect your tension so much, okay? And there's a bunch of scratches here. There's like on the sides. You can't have that. All that is gonna equal up to one bigger problem. So just make sure I have a little bobbin graveyard so that jangling you're hearing is our uh, bobbin graveyard. So here's another one. 
this one is pretty scratched up on this side right here. You see that? That is a really big no-no, really big no-no. So give yourself a good little examination. If you ever need a new one, you can go to jukijunkies.com. We'll link it down below. All of the computerized machines have the same bobbin. So um, I'll link that in case if you need to replace yours, but that's a big culprit to tension issues, okay? You don't want this. You don't want your bobbin to end up in here. So take care of it, you guys. <laughs> All right, so now we're in here couple things to keep your eye out for right here is there is like a little it almost looks like a little brush like what in the world is that I don't even remember sewing with anything like that what is that do not touch that that is supposed to be there that little brush helps with your thread cutter to help the bunching that you see sometimes in the beginning so it's not the end of the world if yours falls off you might notice that it starts bunching up a little more this is not something you can replace but just know that do not pull this out that is supposed to stay there it helps with the bunching when you use a thread cutter and you're starting a new sew out okay in here, there's gonna be a little magnet. That magnet clips onto this so it stays in place. And this little area in between, I'm gonna use the um, oiling pen to show you a little better. So right here in that little spot right there is where you could put a single drop of oil. I would say every like six months to a year, um, just depending on how much sewing you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate. This is with that little oiling pen. You're just gonna do a little drop and you're gonna kind of spread it around so it gets around in there, okay? And you don't wanna do more than like one. Do not do more than one, you exactly. Just drop one and then just kind of spread it around. Exactly, so now I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna do a little sweep around, picking up like, look at that, how gross is that? It doesn't even look like something like that would be in there, but it is, so let's just get in here, pick all that stuff up. You can even turn your hand wheel towards you, so that way you can get to all angles of the bobbin case holder. All right, this is the bobbin case holding unit. And then I can just put it back. So this little part, this is the hook. This hook is what's connecting with your threads to make your loops and your stitches. So we're gonna put that back to the back because that's where it needs to be. And when it's all cleaned out, we're ready to go. This is where you could easily go in with your um, vacuum tip and just go in here and vacuum up any stuff. But honestly, this machine is relatively clean right now. So I don't really feel like I need to go in there, but I easily could and just suck up in those little weird um, areas that get a little bit deeper into the machine and just suck out any unwanted lint. Also spend some time on your needle right here to pick up any lint that you feel like is, you know, just building up right here. There tends to be a lot here, especially from our fabrics. You can clean that up super easy and just do that little routine maintenance and just be careful for right there. So that's really that. Another great tip I wanted to mention to you guys about oiling this area. And I would say do this probably every six months to a year. Um, and like I said, it all just varies on how much sewing you're doing. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take my oiling pen and I'm just gonna lubricate this little guy, the cleaning spot, or I'm gonna put a little bit of oil. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure my needle is up and out the way, all right? And I'm just gonna sweep this around the bobbin case, okay? Because this area gets very dry. This is, oh, this is spinning constantly. And when you do it on the swab, it's really like controlling how much oil gets, you know, put around here. So I'm just oiling the outside here to make sure that it's not super dry. If you feel like your machine is getting a little bit louder, a little bit clankier, it might be time to do just this step right here. Make sure everything is nice and lubricated around and it's not dripping. It's very controlled since we're using this nice little cleaning swab, okay? So it almost just gives it a nice little polish. Exactly, just like a nice little polish, exactly. And then always do a little test sew after you do something like this, just to make sure that you're not ruining the project that you're going into. So that is that. You guys wanna do a little needle down, needle up, just to make sure everything is in the right place. I'm gonna take my bobbin case that's nicely cleaned off and I'm gonna go in kind of at an angle and it's just going to magnet into place. There's a little black nub right here that should sit right there with that little metal um, corner and that's how you know it's in the right position. That opening is towards the back with the hook. That little nubby is with that metal piece right there. That's the stopper. So it's right there in the correct position. So make sure you also pay a little bit of attention to your feed dogs right here making sure that those little canals in between the feed dogs are nice and clean. That's a big place that causes tension issues as well. As well. If there's a lot of pile up in here, it's affecting the way it's feeding it. So make sure you clean up in there as well. So once you're good in there, you can go ahead and put your plate back on. Go ahead and spend some time looking at your plate. Do you have any burrs on the needle plate? 
Burrs in the needle plate can also cause tension issues because it's just another place for that thread to get latched onto and not have a swift um, stitch out. It's backlashing onto something. There's also little fuzzies on the back side of here. Don't pull those off. All those fuzzies have a purpose. So the only fuzzies that you should be seeing here is these three and this one right here on this machine. So just keep that in mind, okay? And, and when you're cleaning this out, make sure you're not pushing on things because there are sensors and other things in here that we don't want to knock out of place. So just be very gentle. It's a very delicate area on the machine. So once this is all good to go, I'm just going to slide this back into position. And then we're just going to put those screws back on. All right, so just screw them nice into position. And Boki, while we're screwing that in, mm -hmm. a couple of questions. Yeah. Why do you like the cleaning swab over a brush? So the cleaning swab's are really nice because the brush tends to just kind of brush the, the dust into other places. It does pick up, but the brush is nice because it, the, I mean, the little swab is nice because it picks things up. I mean, look at that. That is gross. It even picked up this like black residue that was in there, you know, probably like older grease. Kind of like absorbs it. Exactly. It picks it up. It absorbs it. It's a very fine texture. The brush just tends to knock it loose. So if you have like, the brush would be great in the feed dogs to kind of knock the dust a little loose, but ultimately you want to use something that's going to pick it up versus just sweeping it somewhere else. You know what I mean? And, and then you guys have those on jukijunkies.com. That's right. Yep. We have them on jukijunkies.com and you guys are in for a trip. If you use the code YouTube, uh, you'll be able to get a discount on those accessories. It actually even works on Glide Thread too, which is going to be awesome because if you've never worked with Glide Thread, you're going to notice how much cleaner your machine is going to be. So check that out. It's going to be on YouTube. All right, so it'll be for 10% off, a nice little 10% off of all those accessories. So take advantage of that and use that code YouTube, all right? So that's back in position. We're just gonna put our bobbin back into place. Nice little one, two, three, which I love. You don't have to pull that bobbin up. And now we're ready to go. So last thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to oil the little needle bar if you feel like your machine is very dry. And honestly, that's something you only have to do like every year. Um, and if you take your machine to get routinely cleaned, you might not even have to worry about that. But due to everyone's sewing circumstances being different, I am gonna show you how to get in here and just see what it looks like and how to oil it. So let's talk about this. Part. So this little side cover right here is really easy to take off. There's going to be a screw on the back side of the machine. So go ahead and with your Phillips head, you want to make sure it's obviously like the truest to size and I get a good little grip because it's going to be pretty tight the first time you take it off and take that screw out and make sure you're guarding it with your life. <laughs> and then there's one more screw right here by the needle threader mechanism. So go ahead and put it in there and loosen that up like so. And just be very careful and hold this as you're taking that last screw off because it'll just plop off. So just be very gentle. Take that guy off. And you can see there's actually a little bit of lint in here too. There's actually a nice little fingerprint in there too. I could go ahead and vacuum this up or just use like my cleaning swabs and just pick up any of that extra, extra lint because any lint is really unwanted. Any little dust particles is not wanted in here so we'll just go ahead and clean that up pick any of that stuff up you can even go in here with like a cleaning solution and clean that up as well so now you'll see the side of the machine i'm gonna kind of hold it up with my leg here too so here it is lots of crazy things going on in here so really what we're looking for is the needle mechanism which is going to be found i have to turn it a little bit more which is gonna be found right in here. So if you move the needle, it's kind of hard to see because it's kind of hidden behind this little spring, but you can always put the needle all the way down to see more of that shaft of the needle. You could easily, I would do it in this kind of technique, the same technique we did in the bobbin case where you take your oil and you just kind of dot it on here, lubricate it a little bit. I only use like two or three drops here. I don't want it drenched. And we could go in here and lubricate that little shaft there so there is oil and it's once it goes back up into the machine look how dirty it is Ew. um it'll lubricate the little shaft that it's going through so that's another thing that you could easily do too also your needle threader is located right here too you could easily put a little bit of oil on this too if you feel like yours is really dry and it's kind of like hesitating and lagging a little bit as it's going down you can just pull it down oil that little shaft right there too. And we're talking like no drops. We're talking using something like this to just lightly, just lightly, has it lightly polishes it to just make it 
nice and smooth. So once that is good, that's really all you're gonna have to do in here. Do not start touching. You're gonna notice there's grease and things in here. There's connections in here. Don't touch any of that stuff, you guys. If you wanna bring your machine in, get a professional servicing, they will do all that fun stuff. But as far as us, our job is to clean it out, oil those little couple things there, okay? And remember, use that code for this oil. And if you have a TL machine, you're gonna love that oil for that machine as well, because it's a much more thirsty machine. So you're just gonna slide this back on here. Okay, so it just fits in perfect, right? You'll kind of hear it and you'll see it in the front of the machine that it's outlining the way it should. We're gonna go in with those screws. I like to do that first screw by the needle threader, just because I feel like that one has a more of a, it makes it like more sturdy and locks it into position. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw that in, like show. Comment below how often you guys clean your machine. Do you clean it every project? Do you clean it every other project? Or comment the craziest thing you've ever found in your machine. Boy, I would probably win that contest. I've seen crazy things in machines. I've seen lizards and cockroaches, you name it, all right? All right, so that is really it, you guys. That is how you're gonna maintain your computerized machine. It's a very easy, very beautiful process here. We have lots of things on the website, so you guys can check those out at any time. Um, we have the glide thread, which I would highly encourage. We have needles on the website. It's important to change out those needles after every project too. It makes the world of a difference. We have bobbins, we have pre-wound bobbins. We have replacement bobbin cases, replacement needle threaders. If your needle threader is not working, literally anything you can need to just keep up with the maintenance of your machine and just make it a super easy sewing process, you can find it on jukijunkies.com, all right? And that's 10% off the whole entire website for accessories only. Yep. So pretty much all your Juki accessories, all the fabrics, notions, needles, all that stuff is 10% off. Just use yep. code YouTube. And the cleaning swaps which is awesome. Yeah, you this get a is, pack of 25 cleaning We We there. honestly don't do sales like this very often, and this is only through August 31st, right. 2022. So this will be ending at the end of this month. So make sure you guys stock up on your Take advantage. Take all advantage. before the end of this month. And then also, if you didn't know, tell them about our Facebook page. Oh yeah, okay, so the Facebook page is pretty awesome too. I mean, the videos are fun and all, but it's nice to kind of be with like a sense of community. So um, Juki Junkies is a private Facebook group that we have, has over, I think 17,000 members at this point. And it's just a bunch of Juki loving sewers. So it's a great place to go, see our resources, reach out to other people with Jukis, just be inspired, share your projects, share your questions and concerns. So we highly encourage you to check out that group even if you have a Juki or you're considering getting a Juki because it's really nice to just feel out the community and 17,000 other people that love the brand. So um, check that out too. And like I said, download our app for all fun things. We have like kits, we have these fun signs available on the website, tons of fabric on the website. So check out Juki or Gigi's Fabric Shop app or the website at ggscabertrop.live. Alright guys, All right, and so that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video with me here today. Make sure you click right here if you want to watch the video on how to clean your TL Juki machine. So that's going to be right here. Go ahead and click the little picture and don't forget to click right here to subscribe to our channel. So we are posting all the time. You never want to feel left out. Make sure you give us a little like on this video if you enjoyed and found it out to be helpful and you learned something new. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for being here with me today, you guys. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day and don't forget that coupon code is only good to the end of this month so the end of august 2022 10 percent off take advantage of it fully code youtube see you guys